this week's lab, you'll be looking at the evaporative rate of different types of organic solvents. Notice that we are sort of away from water and we are away from aqueous solutions and we're more into the what we would like to call the organics. So you're going to be working with six um, organic solvents. Five of them are shown here. They are hexane, that is a straight chain alkane, hexane, six carbons. Propanol, that is an alcohol, anything that ends with an OL is an alcohol, so this is propanol, that's three carbons. Here we have ethanol, ethanol just like propanol is also an alcohol, it's two carbons. Shown here is pentane, pentane is an alkane and it has five carbons. And also shown here is butanol. Butanol is an alcohol just like ethanol that you saw before and propanol that you saw before. Butanol has four carbons and all the alcohols have an OH group attached to them somewhere within the molecule. So you're going to be working with all of these five organic solvents. There is a sixth one that is not pictured here and that is called methanol. Methanol is an alcohol just like ethanol and propanol is and you're going to be looking at their structures and determining from their structures their intermolecular attractions. One thing you want to look at when you look at intermolecular attractions is the potential for hydrogen bonding and alcohols can hydrogen bond. Some of these straight chain alkanes such as pentane here, hexane over there do not have the potential to hydrogen bond so that will affect the way they react with each other and that will also affect the way they evaporate. So looking at these six solvents, methanol not being shown here, you're going to look at the evaporative rate and extrapolate which one of these has the strongest or weakest intermolecular attractions. Remember when you're thinking about this, think hydrogen bonding, think polar, think nonpolar, Think of all these intermolecular attractions that we've talked about in class. So to start this lab, first you'll cut a piece of filter paper. And some of these strips may have already been cut out and ready in the lab. If not, that's okay. Just take some filter paper that's out and cut them into strips. Okay, approximately maybe this length and this width. Okay, this is approximate. You're going to use our temperature probe that we've used before, and you're just going to wrap this filter paper around. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap this paper around the end or around the tip of my temperature probe. This is where you'll probably will want to have a partner to help you get everything. So now I have wrapped this filter paper around the end of my temperature probe. So notice that I could adjust it, but you want to get it towards the end. And then let's tape it together. So I have some scotch tape. And tape that filter paper to the end of your pH probe. You may want to press it to get rid of any excess folds. So I've taped it my filter paper wrapped around the end of this temperature probe and it's really nice and tight and it's at the end. Now in some cases you may want to wrap it with a rubber band. I think I'm fine but in, just in case if you want some extra support you can take a rubber band and wrap around the end as well. So this will get immersed into each one of your six solvents and we'll measure the change in temperature and from that determine the evapor evaporative rate of each of these six solvents. Once you wrap the filter paper around the temperature probe, you're ready to collect your measurements. So under the chemistry labs folder, you will open that and then click on temperature versus time. And you will see temperature on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. You want to change your scales. You want the temperature scale to be from 5 to 30 degrees. So click on that bottom zero and make sure your, uh, once you make sure that cursor has changed to that squiggly looking line. And change that to 5, hit enter. 
and then change that top part to 30. So now it's at 100. My cursor has changed to that squiggly line. So click 30. And now I am at 5 to 30 on my Y axis. And on your X axis, you want to go from 0 to 250 seconds. So 0 to 250 seconds, this X axis is measured in minutes. So 0 to 250 seconds is roughly around 4 to 5 minutes. So I'll just say 4 minutes here. So 0 minutes, and then instead of 10, I will click on 10, and I'll just change that to 250 seconds is about 4 minutes, so I'll click on 4. Now that I've got my temperature settings and time settings correct, just as an aside, some people may have this already set to the right variable of seconds, the right units, some may not. So if you have it in seconds, as your units into x-axis, you can go ahead and put it to 250. If you have it set up as minutes, you can put it to 4 minutes, or you can go and change the x-axis units to settings, but I won't do that for this particular laboratory demo. Now that we are ready, I have my temperature probe wrapped up in some filter paper, and here, separately, I have a test tube with about 1 mL of ethanol, so I'm just going to dip it in here for about 30 seconds. While this is sitting, I'll click the green collect. And while it's sitting in the test tube, I'll let it collect for about 10 seconds. So you can time it for 10 seconds. It's okay if you're a little bit over 10 seconds. And notice here that I'm still in, within or immersed in my test tube. Now I'm just going to take it out and set it on the table end. And if you look over at your computer monitor, you should see the initiation of evaporation. How do I know it's evaporating? Well, the temperature is going down the minute, or I should say the very second, I took it out of my test tube and laid it out to rest over the edge of the lab bench. So you can do this until it reaches the end of your 250 seconds or your 4 minutes. So let's let this continue to go till the end of this round, which is about 250 seconds or 4 minutes. Now remember, I immersed this in ethanol. You're going to do this for all of the solvents, ethanol and then butanol and then pentane. All six of these solvents will undergo the same type of treatment. Okay, so it's been about four minutes, and the temperature profile looks like this, but I've actually let it to continue to run, run a little bit longer than four minutes, so if I go here and click on the four, it's still running, so I'll put, I'll change that four to six minutes, and you can see that it's still acquiring data, okay? It stops acquiring data when I click on stop. So if you see the red stop, I clicked on stop, and now it has stopped acquiring data. So I've actually, instead of four minutes, I've, have, I've had the instrument collect data on this probe sitting out here for six minutes or so. And now we have the temperature when we took it out of the test tube, and it's begun to evaporate, and it slowly has reached a leveling off or a plateau. What we want to do now is get the maximum temperature and the minimum temperature where we assume the filter paper and the ethanol immersed in that filter paper has evaporated and you just have the filter paper in equilibrium with its outside surroundings. So that would be your temperature minima. The temperature maxima is when we took it out of the test tube, fully immersed in the solvent, in this case ethanol. So in order to get our minimum and maximum temperatures, we will go to this button here called STAT, click on it, we get this box, we can move it around, make it bigger, make it smaller, and what we are interested in are two values. This is ethanol now. We are interested in our minimum temperature, 14.45 degrees, and our maximum temperature, which is 22.10 
degrees. So our maximum temperature was 22.1 degrees. Our minimum temperature where this has equilibrated with the outside environment and let it run for over four minutes, about six minutes. And that minimum temperature is 14.45 degrees. So you want to collect this data for ethanol, then propanol, and all your solvents. You also will have to do some predictions and determine the delta T. So the delta T here for ethanol would be 22.1 degrees minus 14.45 degrees. Get the delta T for ethanol and get the delta T for all the solvents. So once you've gotten your data of your delta T, which is a measure of the evaporative rate of these six organic solvents, you will want to look at trends. But before you actually begin to measure butanol and pentane, methanol and n-hexane, the lab asks you to predict. It's going to ask you to predict whether the delta T of butanol would be higher, lower, or some sort of measurement relative to the first two solvents that you measured the delta T of. So when you predict, you want to ask yourself, is it going to be less than ethanol? Is it going to be more than the delta T of ethanol? Is it going to be less than one propanol? Or will your delta T be more than one propanol? And how will you make that type of determination? Look at the structure. Look at the Lewis structure. Look to see for of, uh, the patterns of hydrogen bonding, such as an oxygen in the molecule or nitrogen in the molecule or fluorine in the molecule. Also look at molecular weight. So before you measure one butanol, just do a quick prediction and see if your prediction is correct. And that will give you a better understanding of how these molecules interact with one another. If it hydrogen bonds with another one of its partners or one, another one of itself, obviously that's going to be a stronger intermolecular attraction. And that's going to really influence how fast it evaporates over time and henceforth the change in temperature. The final thing you want to do is a trend. So the trend that you want to determine in your lab report is the molecular weight or the molar mass of each of these six solvents and the delta T. What is the trend? As the molecular weight increases, does the delta T increase or does the delta T decrease? And you want to relate this trend of your temperature difference versus the molar mass, the molecular weight of these solvents, relate that trend to the strength of the intermolecular forces that each of these molecules have. So that's going to be your lab for chemistry 1520, the first lab. Have a good time, wear your goggles, practice adequate safety procedures, minimize waste, all that good stuff that you know uh, from before. Thank you.